This is Chilean Patagonia. Some geologists claim this was once part of the Antarctic continent. It is now home to rich rainforests and glacier ecosystems. One pristine example lies 5,000 kilometers south of the equator, Milimoyu. Beside environmental organizations working to protect the region, private companies have purchased large tracts of land for conservation purposes. To date, Milimoyu is one of the largest. Remote and difficult to reach, it feels like a timeless place on Earth, mostly untouched and unexplored. I've come here to meet the caretakers and learn what kind of research projects they are developing on this amazing property. What's special about this place? Why would somebody come here? I think what it makes this place really unique is the geographic aspect that it has. In a very short transect of nine kilometers, you have the beautiful glacier of the Melimoyu volcano, then you have a large, large, large rainforest that have never been touched by humans. And then two rivers flow free, one feed by the glacier and the other one by the rain. And these two rivers ended in the Melimoyu Bay that is extremely productive for marine mammals and birds. And this finally ends where the blue whales feed outside the Melimoyu Bay. We are bringing at this point scientists to this place to study this area our focus will be research, conservation, community, and science. Our priorities at this point are endangered species. Rafaela came to Milimoyu in 2009 and lives here full-time two months of the year. She works with her staff and other scientists who have partnered with the Milimoyu Ecosystem Research Institute, or MARI, of which she's in charge. MARI has also created an education initiative with a local village as they are a vital component to the area. Although most of the nine kilometer transect is truly virgin ground, industry has been here in the past. What was once a vast forest of Cyprus is now scarred with evidence of human impact. This place is called the Cipresal, an old ancient forest that grows in peat, that is the soil that we have here. This wood is extremely hard, it's extremely good. Millions of these trees was cut, but the good news is that the soil of this area was not burned. The thing is that now we have little cypress that are growing up, but it's a very slowly grown tree. We're going to have an expert, and she's going to help us also to understand better how this species have been growing here. I told her that we have the soil of this cypress is peat and have never been burned before. She was like, I've never seen that before here in all the region. So we want to wait for her to tell us the best way to keep it safe, like a conservation process for this tree. When in a rainforest ecosystem, there will be rain, and Meli Moyu has plenty of it. On average, it rains 300 days a year, yielding about 5 to 7 meters of rain. This statistic kept us indoors more than half the time. Here, everything is on nature's schedule, we could only wait patiently with the staff, and a sense of community is quick to form. Finally, a break in the weather allows us the chance to venture into the dense forest. Only a small fraction of this land has been explored, and finding new plant and animal species is promising. One sought-after amphibian calls this home, Darwin's frog, the focus of Felipe's research. I am helping Rafaela on the scientific aspects here. I also coordinate the, all the field work. I also have the freedom to perform different research. We are focusing now in this Darwin frog fungus, this is the chytrid fungus. It has been proved that this fungus has declined a lot of population of amphibians and it's believed that at least one species has become extinct because of this fungus. I hope this fungus is not present here, but it has to be about the results of the test. Rafaela told me that I will have in uh, three days, so my three days I just stay here at home, walking the path, taking pictures and enjoying this beautiful landscape. The marvels of this Eden approach sensory overload. In part two of Melimoyu, I'll explore the scope of the land from the glacier to the bay 
and look for the largest animal on the planet.